So now that we've got our, uh, our assembly together here, we have the high pressure line going to our blast head. What we need to do now is turn on the water pressure and get some water going through this system uh, so that we can start the motor. Now for the purpose of uh, illustration, what I did is I put on this uh, 15 degree wide head and I actually put a vacuum gauge on here so that when we start the motor, um, we can determine if everything's working well by seeing how much vacuum pressure we have. Because remember, we need vacuum pressure inside this cavity in order to move the abrasive media from a hopper or from a bucket through the hose and to mix with the water. So now that we've got this set up, I'm going to run over there and turn on the water and we're going to fire this thing up. Once we have water running through our uh, configuration that we've chosen, in this case we have the 15 degree blast head on our gun. The next thing we need to do is start the motor. So the first thing to do here is to check to see how much gasoline you have in here. Always run it with a full tank or start with a full tank. The gas tank size on this is 1.6 gallons which is a little bit more than a gallon and a half of gas. So first put gas in here and make sure it's full. The next thing we need to do is uh, turn on the uh, on switch. And so what I'm going to do now is switch this uh, pull this motor around so you can see it and off to this side of the motor is a red kill switch and the red switch will kill the motor during operation if you want to turn it off and it will also start the motor if you want to turn it on. So what I'm going to do now to start this motor is we're going to put it in the on position like so and we're ready to go. The next thing we need to do is uh, to open up our fuel line. We need to be able to transfer the gasoline that's in the tank to the motor and in order to do that there's a sliding fuel switch here and in order to open up the fuel line we want to make sure that the sliding switch is to the right and you can see by the indicator that right means on so turn that in the on position. Now because this motor is cold it hasn't been run in 24 hours it's totally cold what we need to do is we need to close the choke and so there's another slider here is a gray uh, sliding button and what we want to do now is we want to move that to the left position fully to the left and that's going to close the choke and that's going to enable us to start the motor the next thing we want to do is to want to adjust our engine speed to about the third or halfway position we don't want to start it in full uh, position nor do we want to start it in the minimum position. You notice here that there's a indicator that has a tortoise and a hare. The tortoise is for slow, the hare is for fast. So what we want to do is feel it out and try to find a third to a half. I like it a little bit more, half or third. And now we're ready to uh, start our motor. So in summary, make sure the switch is on, make sure the fuel lines open, close the choke, and set your RPM speed or the motor speed to about a third to a half and we're ready to pull the cord to start the motor. Now remember we do have water pressure built up in the hose lines and also in the pump. So what we want to do now to start the system is we want to open up our line here, open up the trigger gun and we want to pull the cord at the same time otherwise if we don't do that as we pull the cord, we're basically fighting the built-up water pressure in the pump, and that makes it a lot harder to do. So let's open up our trigger handle, and let's pull this at the same time, and let's see how it goes.
the motor stopped. So basically that's how you uh, uh, run or start up uh, the Simpson 4200. Now there is one more thing to uh, learn about this system and that is on the back side here there is a pressure uh, 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 a pressure um, knob that we can use to adjust the pressure up or down. So I'm going to spin this uh, pressure washer around and we're going to turn the machine back on and we're going to kind of get a feel for this uh, for the uh, pressure. So here we go. So now you can see behind me this black knob here that's going to be our uh, pressure knob that's going to allow us to turn the pressure up or down. Right now it's fully open and what I'm going to do is turn this uh, counterclockwise as the motor's running and I'm going to turn the pressure down and we should be able to see the pressure drop. Now generally in operation I would have an inline pressure gauge here so I could really see what's going on and I describe that in more detail in subsequent videos.